What's going on everyone? It's King Tuts Pro. Welcome back to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to track people's faces and blur them in Final Cut Pro 10. I want to give a special thanks to Pixel Film Studios for sponsoring today's video. Also, don't forget to check them out on YouTube where they provide their own comprehensive Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials covering a variety of topics. You can visit their YouTube playlist, which I will link down below. Now we are going to be using a plugin to do this to make our job a lot easier and that's going to be coming to us from Pixel Film Studios called the Pro Anonymous plugin. So again, I do want to give a big special thanks to Pixel Film Studios for sponsoring today's video. Now I do want to show you how to create this uh, in Final Cut Pro. Now you guys can purchase and install the plugin. Link is going to be in the description of this video. This is also M1 compatible. What I want to do is import a video that I want to blur. So in this case, I want to blur this guy's face here. So you can either go into the titles and generators. Under titles, you should have the Pixel Film Studios Pro Anonymous plugin, and you should have four different presets to pretty much blur. So you have the blackout, which will pretty much add a black box over an area that you want to blur and then the other one is going to be the defocus which pretty much adds the normal Gaussian blur defocuses the area that you want to blur and then you have directional blur which just adds that but just kind of creates a blur at an angle okay and then you have pixelate which will uh, pretty much pixelate the subject or the area you want to blur and then this is going to be the title so the titles work uh, just as a normal title. So you would just click and drag this anywhere on your media in the timeline. So you have multiple videos and you only want to blur out a specific area in that timeline. You can just drag this anywhere in the timeline and adjust its length. Or if you want to apply it to the entire footage of that selected clip, you can do the same thing by going over to the effects, going down to the plugin, selecting it, and you have the same exact presets. So you can drag, say like defocus, you would just drag it onto your clip just like that or you can just do it up here. So I'm going to just drag it onto the effect itself because we only have one clip, it would just make it easier. So I'm gonna go over to Pixelate, I'm gonna drag that onto our footage and you can go over to the Inspector tab and then going over to the effects and then you should have Pixelate. Now, if you have it as a title, it will show up like this. So if I undo that, I drag this above our media you go over to the inspector tab and you're gonna click this little uh, text or title uh, option here. So that's the way to access it for the title. So I'm gonna go back and add it as an effect. And once you add it onto your footage, what you wanna do is go down to the track control. So uh, I'm gonna go over this after I track it so you guys can see what they do. So control mode right now is set to track mode. So you have different modes. You have track, mask, and effect. The track mode is the mode that you would use to actually track your subject. And the uh, mask mode is once it's tracked, this will allow you to actually mask out the area that you want after it's tracked. And the effect mode is pretty much the end result of the entire settings that you did. So I'm gonna go back to track mode. I'm gonna click track editor and this will open up a new window. So once the new window appears, what I wanna do is go into the timeline. You can skim through with the playhead. You can zoom in and out and you can also zoom into the clip if you need to. And if you use the hand tool, this will allow you to pan around the clip. So say you're zoomed in quite a bit you can use a hand tool to kind of pan around uh, the clip. So I'm going to zoom out here a little bit and I wanna start the track at the beginning of the video. You can track it anywhere in the video, but I'm gonna track it at the beginning. And you're gonna notice there's a little red box with an outline. So here you have a uh, inner red box which controls the control points to change the scale. And then you have this outer red box which is the search window or the search area. So the search window will allow you to pretty much track anything that's within this box here. So if there's a lot of movement going on, I suggest making the track box bigger. And if there's not a lot of movement, just make it a little bit smaller. What I'm gonna do is start at the beginning. I'm gonna track his face. So I'm gonna track his nose, uh, not too big, maybe something like this. You can also track his eye if you want to or anywhere wherever there's a, a good solid point to track. So if you scan through, You'll notice that he doesn't turn his head or anything, which is good. It makes the tracking easier. I'm going to hit the track forward button. This is tracking in real time as I'm speaking. You're going to see it's going to do its best to track his nose. Perfect. So it's now finished. So if I zoom out of the timeline, uh, this is the full entire, all of these keyframes it added. And this is the full length. So 13 seconds. 
you can skim through and see the result of the track. So it did a pretty good job. Once you're happy with the result, you're gonna hit export data and this will export it to the video. So you're gonna click confirm to close the window. If I go back to the track editor though, I wanna show you something very quickly. Under tracking options, you have this set to position only. What that will do is, as you see, it will only track for X and Y. So it's not actually scaling, it's not rotating, it's not doing any of that. So if you wanted to do that, say your subject's getting closer to the camera, you would want the actual track box to get bigger. And as he gets further away from the camera, you want it to get smaller. So for that, you would go over to position and scale. Now, if your uh, subject is rotating their head or something like that, you might want to change this to position and rotation. Or if you wanted all three, you can select this one here. And it does a pretty good job with that as well. But in this case, he's not really doing any of that. So I just want to do a simple blur. I'm going to go over to control mode. I'm going to set this to mask mode. And I'm gonna go down now to the mask controls. So this is really cool. So once you have the set, you're gonna notice that you have this little pen tool. What this will do is it will actually allow you to make your selection of what you wanna blur. I'm technically gonna blur his face. I'm gonna make a simple square. You can make, a, you can make it round by clicking and dragging. I'm just gonna make two, uh, you know, four simple points above his, in front of his uh, face. So about here, 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 and something like that. And then to finish off the path, make sure you have this little plus icon. So as soon as you click that, it's going to show you what you're gonna be actually blurring out. If I go down to mask controls, you're gonna see you can keyframe the mask controls. So you can say it goes off center, you can add a point and then just reposition this. But I think it did a great job. You can also add them here. So you have position X, Y, and Z. So if you go under guide controls, you can also turn that on or off. This just shows you what you're actually masking out and then you have the anonymous controls. So we're gonna do that after. So we're gonna go over to the top and we're gonna change this to effect mode. So you can see now that if we go back and push play, it blurred out his face and this is in real time as you can see. Very, very good job. And in case you guys are wondering, I am on the M1 chip. So it plays back pretty smooth. So that's gonna be the effect mode, which is the end result. And if we go down to the anonymous controls, you can have the effect on or off. You can apply the pixelate to the mask, which we do want. You can increase the pixelated size, so you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, and then you have pixel offset, so you can offset this if you wanted to. You can blur it more if you want, or have it really sharp. And then you have style control, so if you enable this, so if I push play, this is the end result, looks very, very good. And now if I go over to style controls, you can see there's no motion blur. As soon as I hit this box, it's going to add some motion blur. As you can see, really cool stuff. I'm not a big fan of it personally for me, but if you wanted to have a motion blur, you can. If we were to do a different one, say maybe blackout, it's the same exact thing. We're gonna add it as a title this time. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hit track editor. The new window should appear here. And I'm going to track his face, same thing. I'm just gonna apply it over his nose and maybe do something like this. I'm gonna extend the width a little bit and the height. And I'm going to go with position only. I'm gonna hit track forward. This is tracking in real time. And I'm going to let it go through for a little bit. And I'm gonna hit the stop button. I think that's good. I'm gonna hit export data. We're gonna to go to the mask mode. So you make sure you change it from track mode to mask mode. Then you can just make your selection. I'm gonna make it round this time. So click once and then click and drag to make your curve. And then you click and drag again. And it kind of automatically creates a smooth curve for you so you don't have to be exactly precise. So if I zoom in here to 200%, you're gonna see it added a nice smooth curve and you can see the result. So I'm going to click the anchor points or the control points to reposition the mask. So something like this. These outer red ones are the control handles and go through, make sure that that is a good selection, cool. And then once you're there, we're gonna zoom out to fit. We're gonna change this to effect mode. And now you're gonna see it made it black because we added the blackout preset. So if I push play, it should look something like this. Very cool stuff here. It did an excellent job tracking his face. Under the anonymous controls, you can change the mask color. So say you don't like the black color, you can just increase the this luma here and then increase the color to something else. So say you wanted to do red or something, just drag it there and then you have that color selected. So, and the cool thing about the titles is you can add a multiple titles, which is really cool. So say there's like three people or four people in a shot and you wanna blur out two of those faces, you just add another one of these titles above it. 
And just for this one, you would just add another track data pretty much. So you would track that face and you could track multiple faces or subjects really. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe. I'm also releasing a new pack on Halloween. So depending when you're watching this, it may have passed or it may be up already. So just FYI. But anyways, link in the description if you want to get this plugin. Until then, peace out.